you have probably noticed or you may have heard about this. And if not, let me tell you, nowadays everyone is talking about the possibilities of decoupled applications, and in particular about frameworks like React.js or the one we are talking about today, Next.js. Have in mind though that what we will talk about next should apply to any other frameworks. So, before we start, and just in case you've been living in a cave, a decoupled application in IT is a group of two or more systems that work together, sharing, for example, data without knowing too much information about each other or even being directly connected. In website terminology, the coupling is the process of separating the content system or services. By the coupling the services, each component can become easier to independently work on, minimizing site interruptions and failures, and providing a more efficient and smoother web ops experience. But that's another theory. Hello. And welcome. My name is Alex Moreno, I am Developer Advocate at Pantheon, and I am very passionate about the possibilities of decoupled applications. Over the last two decades, I have worked on so many different projects, as a developer, as an architect, as a consultant, and for the last 10 years, the coupling is something that, like many of us, I've seen the hype and talk a lot about. But actually, only recently I've started to observe that the trend is actually starting to convert into real world solutions and applications. There are many reasons why you should be thinking about going to coupled. The coupling has really good use cases and real life applications, but there are some things that have been holding this back from really taking off. One of them is uh, related to the development process itself and having to build again and again functionality that our users and customers demand and expect all the time. This is what we call in engineering reinventing the wheel. And one of these things is the popular preview functionality in Drupal. When an editor in a website wants to publish something, before hitting the save button into production, they normally want to preview those changes in a safe manner. And they will expect the same for a decoupled application, what we know as a preview button. And this is where we like to think that Pantheon is a different company. We are not just a hosting company, we are what we call a web ops company, and that translates into providing the tools to make our users, our developers, successful. That means, for example, that in Pantheon, you will find a preview functionality that works pretty much out of the box in our decoupled solution, what we call Pantheon front-end sites. However, you can actually use this in your own sites, anywhere else, as the code has been contributed to a Drupal module. I will leave the links in the description as well, but let's have a look. This is the module that we are going to use. At the moment, only Next.js is supported, but the idea is that more and more frameworks will be added at some point. If you're interested, feel free to jump in, use it, and if you want, contribute making this even better. Once we install the module, we will get some credentials. Make sure you keep them because you are going to need them in two places in order to configure the decoupled preview functionality. One in the Drupal module itself, as you can see here. We are going to have a consumer that will contain the secret, and then we will create a preview site. We can create as many preview sites as we need. In our case, I'm going to have just one, pointing to my Pantheon environment. But for example, I could have another one pointing to my local, or even many others pointing to other decoupled sites, or even other frameworks like Gatsby or anything else that we may need in the future. And note here how we are introducing the concept of multi-sites in a decoupled application using just one backend. To finish our configuration, you will need to add your credentials in your environment, which could be your local machine or it could be the cloud. If you are using this locally, you will do this adding those variables in your .m file. If you want to use this in the cloud, you will have to add it in the environment in your hosting provider. In this case, you can see how easy it is to do it in Pantheon. Okay, now that everything is configured, let's have a look at how it works. I'm going to open the backend, in this case Drupal. Let's go to any of the contents and make some changes. I'm going to do, for example, this, and I will add some bold text here. Okay, that's done. But as I introduce, a user, an editor, 
would like to see how those changes are going to look before pushing to production. We are going to do exactly that. We will hit on the couple preview, then select the front end or the couple side in which we want to preview the changes. And we can see how this will look once we save it. See the changes here and the poll text here. Let's actually do that. I will cross the preview mode where we are going to see how this content is looking like actually in, in production at the moment. We will go back to our backend to Drupal, click on back to editing, and I'm gonna save. We can see how this has been changed. Now, if we go back to our the couple application, to our front end side, next yes, in this case, if I click on refresh, we can see how now the changes that we were predicting that it would look like in, in production, they actually look like that. This is it for now. If you are interested in the couple applications, make sure you visit Pantheon front-end sites for more information and the Drupal pages to have a look at the code. I will leave all the links in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you.